If you're gonna be chasing walleyes this upcoming weekend in Minnesota for the Minnesota Fishing Opener, stay tuned because we have a bunch of tips that will help you catch more fish and be more successful. I reached out to a bunch of the guys on the Northland crew all the way from northern Minnesota down to southern Minnesota and they shared some good tips that will help you catch more walleyes for the opener. So I'm just gonna let the guys take it from here and I will see you again at the end of this video. Hey guys, Will Pappenfoos here. Just doing some last minute upgrades on Vexus here, getting it ready for opener. Uh, we've had a couple trips in here so far down to the Mississippi River here back in March. We got to the Rainy River here in April. Just got back from Devil's Lake here doing a little shore fishing this last weekend. But the time is now, Minnesota opener is on the way. I just want to give you one quick tip that I usually stick by here on opener. It's number one, don't get stuck boat chasing. Just because there's a bunch of boats in one spot does not mean that the fish are there. Number one reason is with a lot of the lakes now, we've got really clear water with zebra mussels and stuff like that. Uh, weed growth isn't super up yet since we had a late ice out. So biggest thing is trusting your electronics. Find a spot out to yourself if you can. Get away from boats. If you do that, you're gonna be able to find your own fish. You're gonna find fish that'll eat a lot better. You're gonna have a lot more successful opener. So good luck this weekend, guys. Have fun, bring your deep V jigs. They have been slamming here earlier this spring everywhere else that we've been to. So make sure you have those rigged up. Um, shiners will be good if you can find them, but don't be afraid to throw a big fat header or a rainbow. Uh, leeches will be good too. Everything should be working this weekend. So good luck out there, you guys, and have fun. Hey guys, Brad Hawthorne. What to look for on Mille Lacs. This opener is going to be uh, a little bit different than last year. Last year we had ice out like five, six weeks ahead of opener. So all those fish were deeper, the water was warmer. This year we're going to have extremely cold water. We're going to be looking at mid mid 40s to about 50 degrees is where we're going to open. I'm going to give myself about a five degree, you know, to play with on opener, but we're going to be within five degrees there. My guess would be like 47, 48 will be the water temp. That means V jigs and shiners, the Northland V jig. Most versatile jig you're going to find, pop a shiner on that, start casting anywhere from two to 16 feet is where those fish are going to be. Drive around, mark them on your side imaging, spin around, start firing those jigs at those fish. That's going to be the program. And we're going to have just a baller bite on Mille Lacs this year because of the cold water. Late ice out means three things. Colder water, fish stay in the spawning areas longer, and the bite continues on through the season longer because you started at a colder temperature right off the bat. So we're going to see a really, really good bite on Mille Lacs for the next couple months just because we're getting off to a late start. And it's a much needed deal because we had one of the hardest winters last winter that we've had in about 10 years. Ask any guy that ran a resort or worked on the lake last year, it was an extremely challenging year. So all of us around Mille Lacs are looking forward to one fantastic bite come this opener. I fish up in the Leech Cast Winnie area and Bemidji, uh, all around Grand Rapids to Bemidji basically, and ice just left not too long ago, so the water's really cold. So the key is to find warm temperatures. And my advice would be to find a place where there's shallow water, creeks or rivers coming in, or just spawning areas with gravel, uh, car and other vegetation. So you'll see on my hummingbird, I have highlighted some shallow areas on a large body of water in my area. And using this, I could find shallow stuff and I'm gonna be targeting less than 10 feet and a lot of stuff in that five to six. Rock piles, all that stuff might be a player and the fish are gonna be slow moving. So I am gonna start with a fireball jig here. I got it right here. There you go. The, the neat thing about a fireball is a short shank jig. So you just add a minnow, and, but you could put a stinger hook on here. And see that stinger hook? Have the stinger hook attached and then let me get a volunteer here out of the minnow bucket. And then just go, you can go through the lips or just go in the mouth and come out behind the head. That's a fat head minnow, which works just fine. Shiners are great, but we'll take what we can get. Leave the stinger hook unattached. And when the fish comes up, they'll get the stinger because it's the lightest part. And then just kind of hop it really slow. Sometimes hop, let it, let it pause and they'll hit it. Uh, 
you're gonna be fishing in weeds and other vegetation, this might not work. So a regular RZ jig, I'll have tied on here. Uh, most of the weights I'll be using are eighth ounce, three sixteenths. And sometimes uh, if I really wanna jig, jig and have it fall fast, I'll use a quarter just to create activity. And I absolutely love the deep V jigs. They have that flat shape, pill shape. And uh, the neat thing about these is their, their hook is still long enough to double hook a shiner. Remember, you're gonna be fishing warm, shallow waters, so use, use it accordingly. So put the minnow on like this, put the hook through the bottom and up, and you've got a double hooked minnow. And so that was with a fathead minnow. So you can double hook fathead shiners, but that's gonna be a great presentation. And also, hair works really well. There's a deep V with hair, uh, add a minnow, and if you can't get shiners, just use a small fat head and put it on there and the hair drapes over it and it puffs, so it creates a lot of activity. Shallow water's a big thing. Rivers are high. Uh, we all know that Lake of the Woods, Red Lake are gonna be super hot, uh, and leech, cast uh, you know, go to the shallower stuff. Leech is shallower, has some shallower bays, it's deep, to the west, but there are some shallow bays. Uh, that's gonna be a good one. But most of your fish are gonna be shallow and they might still be spawning. So get out there and uh, find warm temps. And if, if the walleye fishing is slow, I have my St. Croix Panfish Series rod here ready to go with a crappie, crappie minnow add to that uh, waxy. And I'm gonna be catching panfish. I recommend using uh, a seven six or seven foot rod for jigging medium light because it's going to be a slower bite and uh, go to a six footer if it's really windy shorter rods have a little less stress of the rod from the wind and i also have been going to tie up some short rigs only three footers with a bullet sinker and a gamma cat to hook i have a wally wide gap and i also have some octopus style hooks a little bead and a live minnow goes a long way but get out there and just slowly jig the bait uh, key things, if there's any weed growth, walleyes will be in them right away. Uh, and it's been real slow and behind, but as the ice left the shoreline, the sun got beat down in these areas and warmed it up. But smaller lakes, shallower lakes are gonna be the key. So good luck this opener, hope this helps you out. One of the biggest things when I hit the water next Saturday is I'm gonna be paying attention to my graph and I'm gonna be paying attention to the water temperature. Typically this time of year with the ice just going off, I wanna find the warmest water. The walleyes, uh, all fish feel the same way. In order to spawn, in order to chase bait fish, they're all looking for that warm water. So you're gonna probably wanna look a little bit shallow, um, shallower flats. Uh, you'll even wanna maybe look towards some rocks. Um, one thing I'll do after I find that warmer water temp is I rely a lot on my Lowrance, especially my side scan. So I'll be driving around a lot, graphing, trying to side scan schools of walleyes. Once I locate the fish, I'll circle back around them, position my boat correctly with the wind, and then I'll deploy my active target. That way I can pinpoint where the fish are, how far from the boat, and I can cast towards them, see what they wanna eat, what their reaction is. Um, so use your electronics, pay attention to the water temperature. That will be key for you. Another thing I wanna talk about is technique. Uh, my three favorite techniques I have right here and I'm gonna share with you. Number one, you cannot beat the Northland stand-up jig in an eighth ounce right here. If it's a little windy out, maybe go up to a quarter ounce. Um, I've got it on this sweet new Elliott rod, uh, six pound mono seems to do the trick you're going to want to put a spot tail shiner on there uh, fat head will work also or if you get lucky enough to find some red tails or bigger chubs that will also work great and if it's real flat calm out you even might want to try down to a 16th ounce jig get it a little bit away from the boat that that should big time help you get a few fish in the boat for sure another thing i wanted to talk about last year i had really good luck with this new deep v hair jig Northland makes that. Uh, it just falls a lot, a lot slower. You can put a shiner on it. You can put a fathead on it. 
um, seems to trick the fish. Especially this, this time of year, it can be hard to find shiners. So give that a try. I guarantee you'll catch a few fish. I have that on a power line and then about a four foot, eight pound fluorocarbon leader. So give that deep via jig a try, trick them a little bit, make them think it's a shiner, that slower fall, that shallow water. Uh, it worked great for me last year, getting nice fish, keeper fish, and even bigger fish into the boat. And then if it gets real tough, the tried and true Minnesota, uh, you know, what, what I like to call it is the rig. So I got a number eight, uh, you know, real small hook, six pound test to uh, eighth ounce tungsten bullet weight. You know, there's sand grass, you're going very shallow, uh, maybe even some rocks and rubble. That's where the fish like to spawn. So you want that bullet weight to just crawl through that stuff. And I like to tip that with uh, this time of year, a shiner or a fat head, um, maybe even some smaller chubs. You can even play around with leeches and crawlers. It's, it's never too early. Uh, and you'll never know if you don't give those a try. So another nice thing about the eighth ounce bullet weight, if it's flat, calm out, get that line away from the boat. Uh, the fish do spook from a boat. So same with your jig, same with any presentation. If it's calm out, get it away from the boat. That's all I can say there is, uh, and if it's windy out, then you know, up your sizes of jigs or your, or your weights on your rigs um, and, and just let the fish tell you what you want. And the cool thing about fishing opener to remember is that it's a fun event. Enjoy the time with your friends and family. We have an ongoing tradition of the Minky Opener Walleye Cup, which I got lucky and won last year. So I'm gonna try to get my name on this cup again. But just remember, enjoy the camaraderie, have fun, and uh, good fishing. So much of what I do revolves around fishing lots of different bodies of water. And so I'm fishing up north, I'm fishing sometimes into the Dakotas, definitely into Wisconsin, southern Minnesota where I live and am from. And a lot of what I have to think about when, when I'm trying to determine what I'm going to use, how I'm going to, how, how I'm going to use it, the presentations involved, comes down to water clarity. And water clarity, to me, isn't just as easy as north versus south, right? I mean, you think of the northern Minnesota thing where you got some clear water. That's definitely the case. But you're also thinking about timing and water temperature a little bit. So first off, clarity. I'm thinking, obviously, all those jig and minnow folks that are just pitching jigs up shallow, that works so well in the northern portion of the state because with clear water, fish have the ability to study your baits a little bit better. So sometimes it's really hard to, to do any better than the real McCoy, which is a real minnow. But you also have to think and add a consideration on top of that with your pitching and how you're focusing on attacking the stuff with boat control. So you need to stay back and work your way outside in, right? So stay off of even some of the mid-level depth stuff, like 10, 15 feet. Pitch your way up onto it and just see if there's fish on it and gradually work your way in rather than driving into or onto the spot and then just start dropping all around you. A lot of times just pulling the boat up into those situations spooks fish. But you know, the one thing when we talk water temperature, um, the spawn might still be finishing up in a lot of the northern parts of the state. So I'm thinking about nighttime spawning activity specifically. I'm thinking about baits like the Rumble Shiner. Uh, definitely is going to be something if I get a chance to throw at some of those fish up shallow to be able to throw something like this. Just slow pulls. We have to remember with water temperature, fish are going to be a little sluggish. They're going to be a little inactive. It's going to be hard for them to catch up to to fast moving baits. So something shallow on sand at night like this is gonna be great. Those river anglers, they've been already doing that game, right? They've already been playing that game. If I think towards Southern Minnesota and some of the stuff I'll be doing down here, I've got more turbid water to play with. Something like a crankbait does put off more vibration. It does allow them to perform a little bit more chase. And I can pick up the action and the speed on it a little bit because those fish are gonna have warmer water temps to deal with. They're going to be just a little bit further along. Their metabolism is going to be cracking a little bit faster. That's not to say that this year wouldn't be a great jig and minnow year too. So I'm going to spend a lot of time doing a little bit of both. Um, artificials versus live presentations. But I'm going to be thinking specifically when it comes to water clarity conditions and water temperature, which techniques to play with and what's going to be best for the situation at hand. What's going on, Northland Fishing Tackle Fanatics? I want to talk to you about what you should do for the fishing opener where I live in my area of the world, Duluth Superior, Arrowhead Region of Lake Superior. Ah, it's the opener, you know, I'm excited, I get real passionate. You 
can't see under the sunglasses, but that's teary welled up eyes. I hope everybody's having an exciting pre-opener and getting ready to rock it. I want to show you what is going to be number one target for me. It's going to be these laser sharp jigs from Northland Fishing Tackle in an eighth ounce. Why eighth ounce? Because I'm going to fish shallow water. Less current, less wind. Casting up them shallow shoals, rocks, perimeters of waters. People say, where do you go first? Right off the dock. Honestly, fish are going to be shallow. That's where we're going to start. Why? Water temperatures are cold. I just said that, I think. And that's going to be the area where fish are going to eat stuff like that. Kind of happens all summer long. But once things get progressed here and get rolling, I want to show you my favorite tactic, a mimic minnow. Oh, look at that boot tail. And a live minnow on the back of that boot tail for a little scent. And you know what? If that thing pops off because a fish nabs that, I still got that baby swimming. So that's going to make that's going to make ends meet right there, boss. So get out there. Enjoy the fishing opener. I know that I'm going to. And I hope that you guys are going to, too. I know you're going to. We're talking St. Louis River, the inland reservoirs, flowages, the lakes, the loose Superior Arrowhead region where Uncle Jared, Captain Jared Houston lives. I hope everybody's back. Look at Fresh new look for Jared. I'm sorry I cut my hair. Hopefully everybody's cool with that. I know I am for now. It's summertime. Love you all. Tight lines. We're going to see you on the water. I just had to wrap this video up with Jared. Energy is contagious. Jared has all the energy. He's pumped. I'm pumped. Can't wait to drop my boat in the water for opener. But uh, I thought there were some great tips in this video. Some good takeaways. One in particular, I just want to jump like right back to the very beginning of this video. What Will said, he said, basically, don't be following boats around on opener. And I think that's a good piece of advice because you don't know if those guys are on the fish. You don't know what they're doing. Just because there's a bunch of fish, just because there's a bunch of boats over there does not mean that's where the fish are. You know, they might be fishing memories. They might be fishing where those fish were last season. And obviously with how different the season is between this year and last year like if the fish were there last year they're probably not going to be hit there this year but anyway i'm going to wrap this video up if you enjoyed this video and you learned something make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below and uh stay tuned because we have a lot more videos coming in the future here this spring this summer and going forward and until next time we will see you in the next one